Welcome to Delta Cast Tutorials. Today I'll be applying a radial gutter cast, but using Delta Dry as the padding underneath, which is water resistant. So the patient can shower, the patient can get extra hygiene, and this will allow for better comfort for the patient later stages. So because casts get changed a lot, that's one of the benefits of it. So I have my cut stockinettes here, and then I have the padding itself. We're gonna apply the padding like you would cut cast tape, if you will. And I'll be using some Delta cast conformable cast tape, which is a polyester cast tape. It's gonna be really nice and uh, conformable to the patient's hand. And I'll be using a splint involved inside of the cast to make it a little bit easier to get it on the patient. So with that being said, let's apply this to the patient. And the patient's injury is on the second and third, possibly as far as the metacarpal fracture or the third metacarpal fracture. But we're going to have that patient bent where they're or extended and have their wrist in 15 to 30 degrees of extension and the, the metacarpal phalangea joint 45 to 90 degrees of flexion. With that, let's apply the stockinette. So what I'm going to do here is going to cut a little hole at the base of the thumb. Now what I'm going to do is cut a hole here as far as the index finger and long finger. All right, so we have the holes cut for the injured side that we're gonna apply a stockinette to. And then what I'll do is just cut this and lay that down or envelope it over the cast when it's time to finish the cast off. So I'll cut two little slits to make sure that it folds down pretty well. I'm gonna add some padding between the two fingers here. Now, this is important that there's a little tackiness on the inside of that. That will never be placed against the patient's skin. So I'm gonna fold that so that there's nothing that's tacky that's gonna be between the fingers. And all I did is make sure that it's not frayed looking, so I kind of just twisted it around there. And if you feel like it is too frayed for you, just go ahead and cut that with some scissors. All right, so I got that ready. So let's put some stockinette around the fingers. Now this is the soft liner of Delta Dry. So next what I'll do is go ahead and make a little slit inside of the stockinette. and the slit will go towards the ring finger. And you see I have a little bit of length here. You don't need that much, so I'll cut half of this off at least, but I wanna have enough so I can lay on top of my cast tape. Let me cut this down. And this is helpful ways just to make sure the patient feels comfortable. I tell them to bend their fingers, and then I'll just go ahead and cut some of the rest of this off that's a little bit extra. So now let's make a little thumb piece. So I just kind of rolled it up on itself. Now what I'll do is cut a little slit and the slit will go towards the index finger. And what I wanna do is put the slit toward the index finger. Now when it's time to finish off the cast, I'll fold it down even more to have a nice finish around here. All right, now it's time to apply some padding to the patient. So if you notice, I got a little cuff there also. That's gonna be nice when it's time to envelope it in. I'll have a nice little padded edge. And this is gonna help when it's time to put the padding on. I have a little bit of memory where it still has a little memory of being folded or rolled. So I can tuck that underneath that little cuff.
So I'll start at the wrist and then I'll work my way up to the hand and take care of the fingers. And with this portion, you cut it, you, with the padding, you cut it like cast tape. Now, as I go up to the fingers, I'll go around and I'll cut where the ring finger is so I can know to go between the fingers. So now I'm just gonna cut a little extra off the extra length of this soft liner stockinette. And let's finish the rest of the padding. If you have an area like the bony promise that sticks out, what you can do is go ahead and just fan fold it on top of itself. And again, as you place your padding delta dry roll on, you'll make sure that the tacky portion is facing up or away from the skin. So I covered it adequately, but now I have some leftover. You see this little memory that the padding may have. You can go ahead and just tuck that underneath the little cuff that you made. Now it stays. What I want to do here is just add a little bit of a slit here so that I can fold over on top of the cast tape. So I, got, I have my stockinettes prepared and now all I need to do is add my cast tape. So let's go ahead and add this splint to it. That just makes for a faster application. What's nice about this is you have the integrated layers or interlocking performance. So a lot of times you don't have to go around the finger so many times to make the cast super thick. So what I'll do is just make a little center cut in here and so I can put it around the thumb. Now what I'll do is cut off the extra that I do not need. So what we have now, we have a little bit more strength on the fingers. Now we can add our cast tape. I'll make my cast tape what we call sloppy wet so it can wet the underlying splint a little bit better. Now it's time for some of my cuts. So I'll do my regular cut like I would do a regular short arm. Make sure that I have a little rounded edge here where there's nothing too sharp there that can bother the patient. Now it's time to go on the top of the hand to take care of those fingers. So what I'll do is just go ahead and start to go distally. And I'll do my cut, lining it up 
with the ring finger. So what I'm going to do now is just fold that under a little bit and pull it toward myself and go between the fingers. And then do it again. I'm going to line this up and cut where it lines up to the ring finger. And then I'm going to go around the finger that's involved. So what I'm doing is flipping that under. making sure I have two layers around there. And what you can do is, so you can advance it to go further proximal, just go through the fingers one more time if you need to. And then start advancing it. Now, to get the patient in position, all I'm going to do is put a little bit of pressure behind the wrist area. And I'm going to just let the patient relax and do some extension. And use this portion of the heel or the base of my thumb to kind of allow a little bit better contouring and less wrinkles on the dorsal aspect of the wrist. Now, since I got the patient and extension that I need, I'm just going to go ahead now and just bend the fingers down to get the metacarpal phalangeal joint down to 45 to 90 degrees, depending on what the provider wants. Now, if you notice what I'm doing here, I'm pushing this down to it touches the top of my thumb area or the base of my thumb. And if you need to do it further flexion, move your hand further down and bend it down more. And what this does is now a nice little contoured effect inside the palmer area. Now what I'm gonna do, since it's, it's time, I can go ahead and do an inner osseous mold still. And I'm trying to make a flattened appearance on the dorsal and volar aspect. So I'll hold the arm up so you can see what I'm doing here. Hold that for at least a good three to four seconds. And then work your way proximal. Make sure you have the patient's arm in a neutral position as you do that, because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to limit supination and pronation with this cast also, because it's a short arm cast that has the fingers involved, which is the radial gutter side. Now, just an added little step, you can go between the fingers and make a flattened appearance so that it doesn't bow out as much, messing with the range of motion of the fingers that's not involved in the cast. And you can see what I did. I just made a flattened appearance here. Now, 
Now all I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of cast tape around here just to finish off the cast. What I'm doing also here is just pressing that down to make sure the fingers are safe side by side. I don't want to leave a lot of room. Now remember, I put that splint on, so there's not a lot of cast tape I'd really need to apply on the cast because it's really strong in that area already. And I don't know if you can see this, but if it's sitting up, just go ahead and make a little small little cut in there. And then just go ahead and hold your hand in that area so that you can make sure it lays down and laminate it. So in conclusion, our goal with this is just using the cast as mobilization for the radial side of the hand where they have been injured. Maybe it's the second or third metacarpal neck. What the point is, is that we're going to get those fingers down in the 45 degrees to 90 degrees of flexion at the metacarpal phalangeal joint, the ex wrist extension. Uh, it's 15 to 30, but we want to make sure the fingers are side by side. We did add some Delta Dry little fold in between the fingers. And just remember with the Delta Dry cast, you have better hygiene so that the patient can bathe. All they need to make sure they do is use clean, cool water, especially if they went in a pool. Not any free, like free water, like a lake or anything like that, or the ocean. More of the pools or showering. And that is the Delta Dry Radial Gutter Cast. If you need any additional support or training regarding Delta Cast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.